Next, we're going to be introduced to Super Adobe. Uh, Super Adobe is a form of earth bag architecture developed by architect and Cal Earth founder Nadir Khalili using long tubular sandbags, Super Adobe bags, barbed wire, on site earth, and a few tools. Khalili devised a revolutionary building system that integrates traditional earth architecture with contemporary global safety requirements and passes severe earthquake code tests in California. I want to read you a couple quotes from Nadir Khalili. The accelerating rate of disasters in the world and the historical increase in the loss of human life and property must create a sense of urgency for the UN and other agencies to pay serious attention to alternative ways of building. There is a sustainable solution to human shelter based on timeless materials, earth, water, air, and fire, and timeless principles, arches, vaults, and domes. Every man and woman should be able to build a shelter for his or her family with these universal elements almost anywhere on the earth and other planets. These principles, interpreted in the simplest form of building technology, have created emergency shelter, which can become permanent houses and which have passed strict tests and building codes. Since 1975, we have been dedicated to researching and developing this low-cost, self-help, eco-friendly technology, which can resist disasters and to offer it to humanity. The only missing link is to educate humans how to use these timeless techniques developed at Cal Earth Institute to fit their own culture and environment. Uh, Nadir Khalili passed away in 2008. His son and his daughter have since taken on the mantle at Cal Earth. Nadir was a world-renowned Iranian-American architect, author, humanitarian, teacher, and innovator of the Geltif, Gel, I'm going to say this wrong, Geltiftan earth and fire system known as ceramic houses and of the super adobe construction system. Khalili received his philosophy and architectural education in Iran, Turkey, and the United States. His sustainable solutions to human shelter have been published by NASA and awarded by the United Nations and the Aga Khan Award for Architecture, among others. At Cal Earth, founded in 1991, prototypes were built and tested for inclusion in the Uniform Building Code. His six books were written while evolving these techniques and his philosophy of architecture. Rumi, the Persian language mystic poet, was the inspiration behind Khalili's work for his wisdom concerning humanity and the elements of earth, water, air, and fire. Nadir passed away at the age of 72 on March 5th in 2008. Uh, as I mentioned, his son Dastan and daughter Shifta are now working to carry forward his vision and quest throughout the world. Laura Huxley, Aldous Huxley's widow, widow called Khalili the practical visionary. Today we have Dastan Khalili, his son here. Dastan been the pre has been the president of Cal Earth for the past 11 years. As a filmmaker, Dastan made five feature documentary films about the work of Cal Earth, and he has spent the last 44 years directly involved in this work, and his father sighed, experiencing every iteration and evolution of Super Adobe. So I'd like to invite Dastan up to speak about Cal Earth. Uh, happy Sunday, everybody. How are you? Kamali Garchok Girad. Zar Shabbat. Earth turns to gold in the hands of the wise. Rumi. Um, I'm very grateful to be here today. Thank you, Ray, Art, Ojai, Green Coalition, everybody, to share this uh, beautiful architecture, this knowledge that uh, my father originated. But you know, he'd, al he'd always say this work is for the people, by the people. And Though he was the visionary, it was always important for him to make sure that everybody who was involved in this work was acknowledged. And over the years, over the decades, thousands of students, apprentice, people have been involved to bring this work to what it is today. 
So now on to our current situation dealing with uh, fire and earthquake. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, let's see, there we go. So this is a super adobe structure that went through the Thomas fire. Um, and as you can see, there is some smoke on the exterior, but the building was pretty much unscathed. Here's another example. This is a super adobe structure. The walls are made of super adobe. The roof and the windows are using more traditional materials. Here's the interior. As you can see, there is some damage to the traditional materials, but even the walls themselves, the damage, there is no damage in fact. And the reason for this is because this kind of work, super adobe specifically, is fireproof. Okay? No matter how intense the heat becomes, earth will not burn down. In fact, it becomes stronger, ceramics being an example of that. This is a uh, multi-school, uh, multi-structure um, orphanage that was done by um, students of students, alumni, in Nepal called the Pegasus Project. These structures went through two uh, 7.2 plus earthquakes in Nepal. I don't know if you remember a few years back. The city around it was completely leveled. The exterior of these buildings had some uh, minimal cosmetic cracking. This became ground zero uh, for um, the ultimately for the community to rebuild. So what is Super Adobe? Super Adobe, like Ray said, is taking long bags and barbed wire and using universal principles in physics. What you get as a result of this are buildings that are fireproof, hurricane-proof, tornado-proof, and highly earthquake-resistant. In regards to the tornado, in fact, uh, just last week we talked to some alumni who had built these structures in Puerto Rico, and a number of them went through Hurricane Maria, again, completely unscathed. The reason this works is because we are taking the understanding, the best of the past, earth architecture, with these universal principles and making them as effective as possible. So the principle of the arch is where we begin. You take an arch, <coughs> uh, an arch rotated on its axis becomes a dome. This is the Sunrise Dome that was built in Nukoyama, a uh, project called City of Friendship in the uh, 80s. An arch repeated back to back becomes a vault, creating a long room. This is a floor plan for a vaulted house design. Super Adobe building system. Super Adobe sandbag and barbed wire technology. It uses the materials of war for peaceful ends, integrating traditional earth architecture with contemporary global safety requirements. Long or short sandbags are filled on site with earth and arranged in layers along coils, compressed, with strands of barbed wire placed between them to act as both mortar and reinforced tension. Okay? This is a patent and technology offered free to the needy of the world and licensed for commercial use. So here's an example of Super Adobe. As you can see, you have the long bag there. It's tamped down. The barbed wire is placed upon it. And you do this line generation. And you're building your walls and the walls of a dome. And ultimately, you can put a vault on a uh, rectangular room. Now, for building department requirements, the material that we're using usually is anywhere from 85 to 90 percent soil mixed with cement. This stabilization helps get permits for these structures. This is the emergency shelter village that uh, we built in conjunction with the uh, United Nations, the UNDP, they were very interested in this architecture and we were in the process of building and they came and visited and even participated in this project. This is for disaster relief situations where there's an emergency and you want to build smaller structures. Uh, here you can see the construction of it. One of these structures with a knowledgeable uh, builder and anywhere from 10, 8, 10, a dozen people can go up in a day. This is uh, the village with finishes, as you can see. This is at Cal Earth. And here you can see people moving within it to give you an idea of the size of the structures. Very basically, to build an emergency shelter, to build a very simple shelter, what you need are these long rolls of bag, 
shovel, tamper, barbed wire, cutters, and small pots or, uh, and cans. And what we came up with was what's called the coffee can building technique, where anybody of almost any age, okay, can participate in the construction of this kind of architecture. 50% of our student, in fact, are women. And my father always believed it is paramount importance, of paramount importance, that the community can be involved in the construction of these buildings. And at Cal Earth, we do weekend workshops. In two days, we teach people how to build structures like this. Now, we go on to the Eco Dome. The Eco Dome is a 450 square foot home, okay? And it has uh, three small rooms and an entryway. As you can see, this is the structure coming up using Super Adobe Method. Now this is the shell. This is the finished shell. And this particular building is stabilized. So it has that percentage of cement in it. Uh, shear force was tested on this for earthquake resistance. Your average home at that time, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's changed yet or not, but was about 3,800 PSI of pressure before the structure comes down. Uh, this particular structure went up to 22,000 PSI, and the testing had to be stopped because the equipment began to fail. This is the Eco Dome finished exterior. Here are the interiors, very beautiful. Earth One. Now, this is a nine volt house, 2,000 square feet. This was built in Cal Earth as an example of having a conventional home. This home has a residency permit, uh, and it is fully permitted, again using Super Adobe and vaults, built with the same mixture. Here's Earth One completed with finishes. Here is more pictures of it. This is an interior of Earth One, so you can see. This is the kitchen, and what we did is we went to Home Depot and we bought all the windows and the cabinets and everything to show that any kind of conventional existing stuff can be plugged into this. This house has a conventional heating as well and cooling systems, although it is very much designed for passive heating and cooling as well. So at this time, here's some uh, locations where Super Adobe structures have been built, and a lot of these have been permitted. Uh, Earth One in Hesperia, Eco Dome in Hesperia, Bonita Domes in Joshua Tree, we built in Yucca Valley, Landers, Barstow, Las Vegas, Hawaii, Arizona, New York, Florida, Austin, Vermont, Alabama. Also around the world, Haiti Relief Project in Nepal, the Pegasus Project, the Banjar refugee camp in Iran, a refugee camp in Jordan with Oxfam to help Syrian refugees, and South Africa. And this actually, this image is from South Africa, the uh, children's home. The good news, and why we're here right now in this conversation, the good news is that we have been working with the ICC, the International Code Convention, uh, for almost two years now to get to the point where we can ultimately have the approval needed to take the blueprints that we have that have engineering calculations and to be able to work with building departments, building and safety planning departments so that they can have the reassurance that they need so that this work can become accessible to everybody. Next month in February, we're going to go and present to the ICC uh, after two years of working with them in the hopes that their conference will finally see, have the information that they need and give us approval so that we can go into the testing process. So this is a very exciting time uh, uh, with this work and being on the vanguard of it. The bad news is, uh, Cal Earth has recently been shut down the campus. Um, unexpectedly, the fire department uh, came and told us that our fire lanes are improper and we need to close the site. We have a contractor, we have all of our civil plans, and we're in the process of doing fundraising to address all of this, okay? Now, as I said, my father this work, I was with him, in fact, when he began it uh, at four years old. And for him, the most important thing was to empower the individual to recognize 
that you can build yourself a home, a shelter that is fireproof, that is earthquake resistant, that works in harmony with nature, that is healthy, that is not toxic, and you can be involved in that in any array, any kind of a level you want, but you are empowered to know that you can be part of that. And that was what was his passion. That was really the essence of his quest. Rumi says, In talab meftoh matlu toast, in sepo nosrat rayat toast. The quest itself is the key to all of your desires. The quest itself is the banner of your victorious armies. So when you have the quest, it is inevitable that you will reach the fountainhead. And so at Cal Earth, our quest is to empower individuals. So I ask you very humbly, if you are able to, you can go to our website, make donations. Um, we are going to start this construction process in February because we're doing everything we can to make sure the campus reopens and is available to everybody. For me personally, being on this journey, what I have found is wonderful and most incredible is that the key is you. Everything that I've shown you that's been built was built by students, individuals, some of which are here, which I'm incredibly proud of. Wade, John, Gabe, um, I forgot your name, I just, I, Jose. Jose, that's right, and others, yes, yes, exactly. And so the key is you, okay? We are the ones who will make the difference. We are the ones that are making the difference. And I look forward to working with Planning and Safety. And it was a real pleasure meeting you today, uh, my friend. And I want you to know that 7 billion and growing, the population of this planet, climate change, the most available material is Earth. We have to build with Earth. Because in the final analysis, there isn't going to be enough trees, enough steel, enough concrete. And we're not saying it's bad to build with wood. It's bad to build with steel. We're not saying that. There's a place for everything. But the solution for what we're dealing with is right under our feet. Thank you.